Okay, on this short video, I'm going to show how to sprig or add clay to your existing tile to create um, another level, um, essentially to bring your foreground even more forward. Um, so right here on this design, here's the pelican, and this wing is probably the farthest, most protruding element of the image. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to get a piece of clay and I'm gonna trace this shape onto a slab, cut it, and then I'm gonna apply it to my design. So first off, let's get a piece of clay. I got a bat. Um, I already took some of the same clay. I rolled it out thin. This is thinner than the width of one wood stick. Um, uh, in between a little bit more than an eighth. So here's my design and I'm just gonna go with one area. Let's go here. Okay, there's my clay and this is my wing that I'm going to be adding. And also you can use a ballpoint pen. We also have in some of your guys' toolkits, you're probably wondering what these are. These are called stylus. I'm trying to get a good contrast. It's essentially a little tiny ball on the end, and some of the toolkits might have them. So this is another way you can use to trace. So I'm just going to carefully and slowly trace around that wing. Okay, this comes down like this. I'm also going to put some of those lines, okay, or shadow marks. I'm even going to cut all this. I can, I could make it larger, and after I put it down, I can uh, trim back. So some of these shadow lines, I'm just going to add those, and just so it'll give me an indication where the feathers in the image are. And if I feel like it, I can transfer them. So, yeah. And this little stylus is nice. It doesn't tear. It's a little bit bigger than the head of a ballpoint pin for transferring design. But if you have a stylus, you know, use it. Okay. So, and I lift it up. And I faintly have, I'm not sure if you can see it, I faintly have the image. So now I'll just take my X-Acto knife or your arrowhead tool and I'm just gonna trim this, so. And I'm just making a straight vertical cut right now. And I can shape later. Yeah, so there is my one wing. This is the very top part right here. So right there is right there. And again, keep your clay moist. So you can reuse it. These little scraps will come in handy. Okay, I'm going to bring back over my tile. Let me get it centered for you here. And, yeah, and now here is my wing. So that is quite a bit and I'm going to scratch to attach it, and then I'm gonna to start to carve and compress and really start to shape it. So um, what I'm gonna do now, I'll use my stylus again. Hang on one second. And I'm just gonna trace what I'm gonna use. Again, make sure that you scratch to attach. I'm going to trim this off here. I'll do that now. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to have that fade back. Oh, there you go. Give you an indication where I'll be scoring. All right. So now, again, apply some water. And I'm gonna, again, it's always good to score in one direction, okay? So, I'm gonna use my modeling stick with the chisel end or screwdriver end, and I'm gonna make sure I have an adequate amount of water to create a paste. 
my piece is firming up even though it's sitting on this white uh, formica covered particle board um, the clay is starting to firm up so again uh, maintaining moisture get a spray bottle and always be checking to make sure it's not drying out on you uh, spritz it every now and then especially before you wrap it up but don't well, I got a little ding there in transportation this morning brought it from home I have to fix that but score really good okay we're just trying to build up a paste and more water So I'll do this, my wing itself, it's going to be protruding out. Get it in closer. So I'll add this wing and start to sculpt it um, in this short video. And then I'll be coming back and pointing out some elements. Because you can create a lot of depth with your bob relief without really having a lot of depth at all. So. And we'll just be going over how to subtly change the surface uh, to make uh, indentations show up or creases. If you're doing a face, lines or wrinkles. So there, one more time with water. All right. So the wing is going to be the farthest most element on this bar relief and it'll be breaking the plane of this uh border and i got a little bit of work to do on my border it got damaged in transportation but now so this is my wing first thing i'm going to do is just all my lines are going in this direction so i'm going to just be wiggling it and getting it to bond really well Okay, maybe put a little water here. Looks like I just lost all of my lines, so I'm gonna have to put them back in again for shadowing. But I'm just smoothing and trying to squeeze any air out. There. So I think I did a pretty good job. Some of the water I've seen seeping out. Okay, probably going to trim this back a little bit and feather it into the rest of the body form. Good, so at this stage, I'm going to be using again my uh, chisel, one with the straight edge with a slightly cup shape. And now I'm going to be defining this wing. And again, I'm compressing. Hoping my hand doesn't get in the way here with you guys. But I'm going to be bending this, come in on this side, and I'm just beveling and rounding, and again, some trimming. Okay. Some of the um, videos that can be found on YouTube um, a lot of the ball relief, instead of the majority of the work being done in carving, uh, they do additions like this, sprigging. And when you do do this kind of uh, sprigging, you just have to make sure you bond it really well and also dry slower. You just can't, when you're done, just leave it uncovered and say, oh, I'm done, and let it start to dry out. Uh, that's when some of the layers can separate and then your bas relief is just a bunch of pieces so, so again you can just see right now i'm just rounding out this wing i'm not putting any detail in i'm just trying to get the shape and again i'm using this cup shape flat chisel to just compress all right i'll let this firm up a little bit And then I'm going to feather this back. Right here. I might have taken off a little bit too much back here. So look at this. 
another sh way to show you. Just take a small coil. I'm rolling it in my hand. And I'm just gonna lay it right there. So it isn't such a straight cutoff. Um, I'm just gonna feather it back like this. So that's sprigging. Okay, and I soften that angle a little bit. And then now my wing extends all the way to here, but it just slightly tapers. All right. I'm gonna use my fingers and I'm really, this angle, I, it was kind of round and I hit a plateau. I'm just gonna now soften that and have this slowly taper up to this high point. This is where the bones of the wing of the uh, pelican would be. And I'm just gonna gently taper that to that high point there. So yeah, I get the shape the way I want it. And again, I can come back with this and define that crease. You can also, again, rely on your paint brushes, you know, for smoothing in those tight areas. You get used to doing that. So there's my pelican's wing. And again, this is protruding, a, this wing is protruding above the elevation of my border. And this is going to be the, the farthest forward foreground. Um, I'm going to come back one more time. It's always good to have maybe one or two copies of uh, the exact size um, if you get any holes. So I'm just trying to replace this. And I'm checking. Yeah, it's pretty close. I move it forward a little bit. Apologize for the squeaky chair. I'll change that. Good. So I'm going to use my stylus again. And I'm going to come back, I'm going to use my stylus again, I'm going to come back here and then now put back in some of the shadows for the feathers. Um, this rendering of the pelican, again, uh, if you see the color image, um, it looks like a head of lettuce on its side. Again, this is king pelican lettuce but uh, I'm gonna turn it back, this lettuce thing back into a pelican, but I'm gonna keep it close to the stylization of this actual image here that we're using. Okay, and then look at some of the creases here of the different levels of the feathers. Okay, and again, this is just re-referencing, so I can then, and let me put some here, where the body is. Yeah. And let's pull it back out. There, so I got a little bit of shading now. Um, you can see this, the stylus that I used, a little bit larger than a ballpoint pen. Again, it didn't tear, but it left shadows that now I can come back and re-emphasize. So that's what I'll be doing next. And I'm just gonna show you um, a couple examples of doing the feathers. Um, I'm not going to do the whole thing, I'll, that'll take too long, but I'm just going to quickly come back here and I can use, again, I like this tool, um, I can come and make some marks. I can use various tools in this process. Let me show you, I could even come back with the stylus itself, the one that I just transferred with, and that could make grooves, but I'm not just trying to make lines, I'm trying to make folds and creases and you can see the difference. So, yeah, I'm just roughing this out now. And then at the very edge, I will put some actual feather texture right near the edge, okay? some of these creases here. Okay, so I got the wing fleshed out. I'm gonna zoom in real quickly here and I wanna show you the head, okay? So let me do that. This will take a second. Okay. 
There you go. We got it upside down. Let me get it in view. So, let's see. Here's the head. Uh, I'll lift this up just a little bit. There we go. So some of the head um, in the image. Okay, this is the bill, upper bill. This is the lower bill. And then this is that little um, skin where pelicans can catch a really big fish and this stretches and goes down their throat. So right here, and you can see the eye and then where the head kind of comes in. I make little tiny, very minute adjustments to the surface to show these different depths and the neck. So, you know, when you're working, and I also tapered and rounded this quite a bit. So initially in the first video, the neck, I had, um, this was quite high and I'm slowly just shaving it down to get the feel. But I just want to show you some close in detail. And this is actually the fun part because it doesn't take much, you know, to express a shadow. You see a shadow on some part of your design and it doesn't take much material to be removed to bring that shadow forward. And then you can come back with a small paintbrush and just smooth that area. But this is where the detail and I think the fun comes in to play because um, just subtle gestures. And right here, the eye, it kind of comes in. The eye is farther in than the bridge here or the cheek of the bird. Um, and I'm gonna be working on the pupil next time we come back, so. But I just added this morning, I just added the wing and I sprigged that on and now the wing, the farthest most point is above our border. So that's it for this one. And I will probably have one or two more short videos and complete this tile. And that's it for this one.